hello everyone welcome to my space so in the place of um study a few days ago the holy spirit highlighted something to me and uh, you know i've read this story several times i think every year for a while and it was interesting that the holy spirit called my attention to certain qualities about this man called elkanah in first samuel chapter one we'll read a few verses and i hope and i trust that at the end of this um our brothers will be inspired to be like this or even better and our sisters or ladies that are looking to get married soon would desire for a man with similar qualities and even even more and seek the holy spirit to guide you really so that when you do it that one time you'll do it right so i'll read first samuel chapter one the entire chapter has 28 verses, but I'll pick a few as I go. And you can read the entire chapter um, at your own time. So I'll start by reading 1 to 5 and verse 8, and I'll pick out a few other verses after. Now there was a certain man of Ramathim Zophim, that's a long one, of Mount Ephraim. And his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuf, and Ephrathite. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship. So I'd like to highlight that first quality about Elkanah he was a worshiper and needless to say he was a lover of God because you don't you won't worship who you don't love and he made it a point of duty to go up with his family every year to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh so he was not only a worshiper he was a giver praise God and the two sons of Eli Eli was the, was the priest then where they went to um, worship. And the two sons of Eli, Hophini and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, offered, he gave to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons, and to her daughters, portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion for he loved hannah but the lord had shut up her womb so out of the two wives penina had children hannah didn't and they say here that god shut up her womb but that's a topic or a talk for another day i don't believe he did but he made sure that his family had enough to give to the lord so it wasn't him just going to sacrifice and worship and say, you women, you know, fend for yourself. However you want to give to the Lord is up to you. He made sure that everyone, the first, the wife, Benina, that had children, she and her children had portions for the Lord. So he not only upheld the attitude and the lifestyle of giving, but he made sure that the family had supplies to give to the Lord as well. How remarkable. Verse 8, and then Elkanah, her husband, then said Elkanah, her husband, to her. So I jumped, I skipped a few verses there, which I'll explain. So at this point, Hannah was downcast. She was feeling a bit low. And that was because Penina noticed that she got more portions from Elkanah. And so she would taunt her and provoke her and you know make fun maybe if i can use that word saying you've not had children to make her feel bad so they'd had that interaction just before verse 8 and elkanah was here trying to comfort her then said elkanah her husband to her hannah why weepest thou and why eatest thou not and why is thy heart grieved am i not am not i better to thee than ten sons so this was a man that sensed from a distance that the the wife is feeling low you're able to read the countenance of your wife and the communication is there 
So it seems to be ticking all the boxes, isn't it? I'll read 10 from verse 10. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept so. Well, thank God she prayed unto the Lord because sometimes maybe you've been praying for some time, like we've just read, they went to the house of God every year. Uh, some people could get to a point where they would feel like, what's the point of praying? I'll just stay and weep my heart out and do nothing else, just mourn. But thank God she picked up herself, encouraged herself in the Lord and said, you know what, even if this is the 10th time or 20th time or however number, what, what duration or what time frame it was, I'm still going to cry to the Lord. And verse 11, and she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but wilt give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. I want to draw attention to something. So she made this vow to the Lord. We did not hear that, or we did not read that she had a conversation with her husband about this first. She straight away knew in her heart that God is the one that gives. He There's no problem or issue that he cannot change. Even if there's an enemy in the world, like we know now, that would want to stop things and hinder. But God can change any situation. And she went ahead and made this vow. Like I said, she did not, it's not recorded in this chapter that they, she had a one-to-one -one conversation that, you know what, husband, I'm going to have this chat with the Lord and let's believe that God will change things at the back of this. She went, she went straight away and had that conversation and prayer with the Lord, bearing her heart and making a vow. And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. So I'll skip and go down to verse 16. So Eli, because he saw her lips, so noticed her lips moving, thought maybe she was drunk. And he said, when are you going to stop this wine? You know, and her response to him in verse 16 was, count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. So she communicated to him that, you know, she was grieved and she just poured her heart out to the Lord. And Eli said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. So he sealed that petition with a blessing. Praise God. Verse 19. And they rose up in the morning early and worshipped before the Lord again, praise God, and returned and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. God heard her. He took her vow seriously. The prophet or the priest in the house of God blessed her and sealed all that prayer. And when she went home, praise God. The Lord remembered her and she conceived. Verse 20, Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived, that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. And the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. And Hannah went not up. For she said unto her husband, again, let's note that, I will not go up until the child be weaned, and then I will bring him that he may appear before the Lord and there abide forever. Now let's note what Elkanah's response was. And Elkanah, her husband, said unto her, Do what seemeth thee good. Tarry until thou have weaned him. Only the Lord established his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she weaned him. So we didn't hear here um, Elkanah saying, what did you say? You're not going to join us this time because of what? You made a vow and you want to give this child that you've been waiting for for 
who knows how long 10 years five years however long it was and you say you want to when did we have that conversation when did i agree that with you no he gave his support and there's something he, he mentioned here he said in in verse 23 only the lord established his word what word was he talking about there because as far as we know even if we know that they went on to have children after that we it's not been communicated to us before this verse that when um hannah made that vow to god god spoke back to her immediately saying oh i'll give you more children if you keep your promise or keep this vow we didn't hear any of that so could it be that he also was gifted and he had that revelation on the inside that yes i'll support and agree with my wife on this and no man that gives to the to god loses god would out give you any day could he have had that revelation and understanding that was why he made sure that he lived a life of giving and promoted it and encouraged it among his household as well could it be that but let's take note of what he said only the lord established his word he knew that there was something about god and his word and anybody that gives to god we def will definitely come back with bountiful harvest verse 24 and when she had weaned him she took him up with him with her with three bullocks and one ephah of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him unto the house of the lord in shiloh and the child was young so she didn't just go just with the child and nothing else she saw the need to take extra presents and extra gifts and offering to the lord what what a family what a lifestyle of giving and they slew a bullock and brought the child to eli and she said oh my lord as thy soul liveth, my lord i am the woman that stood by thee here praying unto the lord for this child i prayed and the lord had given me my petition which i asked of him therefore also i have lent him to the lord as long as he liveth he shall be lent to the Lord and he worshipped the Lord there. If we carry on from chapter 2, we'll see that God blessed her. She had more children at the back of that. Thanks be unto God. But the focus, like I said at the start, is on Elkanah, the husband. The characters or characteristics you saw in that man, a man that loved God, a worshipper, a giver. He encouraged his family, his, his wives, the children to worship God, to give to God. And when the wife made that vow, he encouraged her, he supported her and said, yes, go for it, my wife. Remember in verse eight, he said to her, am I not worth more than eight sons to you? So you could see that spirit. He's, he counted everything that he had as not belonging to himself, but God, <clears throat> excuse me, but God's. And he knew that whatever you give God, you will come back with multiplied increase and he supported, he loved, what a man, what a character. So I'd like to encourage us men, brothers, if you're a Christian, if you're not a Christian, I hope that you'll be encouraged and see this as an opportunity to turn to the Lord, that he's one that is a blesser as we love him, the way he reciprocates his love. In fact, if you've not given your life to Christ, look at the health and everything you've been enjoying so far, all free gift from God. And he's using the good things that he is blessed us with to beckon at your heart. Say, come, come, my son, come, my daughter. I want to have a relationship with you. And for those that are already born again, I hope you can look at this man's character, whether you're married already and maybe you need to make adjustment, copy or gather some principles from Elkanah or you're not married yet you're looking to get married for us ladies I hope that you'll seek the face of the Lord and ask the Lord to give you men or give you a man with these qualities a man that loves God a giver that would encourage his family set a good example so he would practice what the word says and ensure that the family is provided along those lines so that they can 
practice what the word says a giver a spiritual person and when the wife has made a vow or wants to go out to evangelize or do ministry or work in the house of god as long as the house is not neglected the children the husbands and the husband is not left unattended to this man would give you the support that you need when it's time to pray together when your countenance feel a bit down for instance you're working and you're a, you're a mom, maybe you have a full-time job or your business, and all that can be draining. It can take a lot from you. And this man still understands. He senses when, you're, when you return from work or sometimes he senses that you're not as lively or bright as you would normally be. And you approach you, what's, what's, what's the matter, my love? You know, what, how have I, you two address each other? And the communication is there. You know, there's that. He wants you to know that he's there for you. He loves you and encourages you. I pray that most importantly, the bottom root is one that loves God, one that is a worshiper, one that fears God and leads by example. And every other thing will fall at the back of that. So I'd like to pray that men and women, brothers, sisters that have read or listened to us and read the scripture along would maybe go back, read it again, the entire chapter, chapter one, meditate on it, let God speak to you. And at whatever stage you are in, whether married or unmarried, that if there are areas you need to make adjustments, the Lord will help you, the Holy Spirit will guide you. And if you're not born again yet, I'd like to give you a chance to get born again before I pray for um, those that are already on this journey. So if, if you mean it from your heart, you believe that God sent our Lord Jesus to die. He rose again for your sake because of the love that God has for you. And he wants to have a relationship with you. That is the only way to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. If you please say these words with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending our Lord Jesus to die for me. I believe with all my heart. That he died for me and he rose again the third day for my justification. I receive Jesus into my heart by faith. I receive eternal life by faith. Thank you, Father, for your love. And I declare that by this declaration of my faith and my belief in what you did by sending our Lord Jesus, I declare that I am born again from today. I declare that I am a child of God. Thank you, Father, for your love. Dear Holy Spirit, fill me with your presence and guide me on how to carry on this journey that I'm starting from today and be consistent and steadfast and pressing and give me understanding to your word as I read in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for everyone that said this prayer. I pray for them. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare that you are now a child of God indeed. Satan has no hand or authority over your life anymore. I declare the blessings of God upon you, the peace of God upon you. And if you're having any ailment or health challenges that you're going through, I speak peace in the name of the Lord Jesus. I rebuke every infirmity in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. And I declare you well. I declare peace over you. And any other challenge you're going through, that the grace of God Will support you the favor of god will smile on you and you experience changes in your life and that situation or in your family in jesus name amen god bless you if you said that prayer please get in touch we would like to share materials with you free of charge and encourage you and guide you really on how to carry on this faith walk that you've just started and for us sisters or brothers already in the faith and you're looking to get married and and wondering you know what kind of man do i want and maybe you've been looking and desiring for things that are not really as important as what you should be focusing on maybe you're focusing on the physical attributes that he should be tall should be dark or light skinned he should be from a wealthy home well educated maybe lives abroad and all of that and those are the physical elements really that that can change any time you can find somebody that has those characters the box ticked and within a short while things change 
it could, the person could lose things. The person's personality or character can start to change. But if you focus on the bottom, the grassroots, the most important things, things of the spirit, a man that loves God, all these other characters will fall or come at the back of that. So I pray that and I hope that you start to have a different mindset in your expectations as far as that is concerned and ask the Holy Spirit really to guide you and give you that person that would be a man after God's heart. Because once that is sorted, you would be on a journey that, you know, no matter what, I'm not saying that challenges don't come in marriage, but see how Elkanah worked with Hannah when she got provoked by the first day woman that had children. The husband stood by her. So that was a challenging time. He'll stand by you no matter what. You all will work through it together. So let's pray that the Lord will guide you on the way that you should go and lead that man or that woman to you that would make your life fulfilled and complete so that you can fulfill God's plan and purpose for your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. You ministered this to me and highlighted these points when I studied the scripture a few days ago and you said to bring it to everyone that you would bring to this space to listen i thank you for your wisdom embedded in your word i pray that everyone that's on this journey seeking for the person that they would marry whether the man is looking for the woman or the other way around that they'll be guided by your spirit that they'll focus on things that are noble things that are more important most important even so that they can fulfill your plan and purpose for their lives without distraction without hindrance without opposition that they'll, they'll find somebody that they can grow together in the things of god and everything else so that when they get married no matter the difficulty or challenge that they go through maybe even in the area of finance or children they are waiting together they will be they will be encouraged to agree in prayer seek the lord and make vows or however you lead them to do and they will see a change they'll trust the word they'll trust that the word of god works and they will grow together and raise their children in the way of the lord they'll mimic families like this like we've seen in the scripture worship will be number one in their household oh hallelujah pray that you will put that deep desire on everyone that's listening to this teaching of this word tonight and they'll come back with testimonies and as they seek your face with, with the right desire right hunger and all of that in their hearts they will surely get answers to their prayers and they will testify and be a source of encouragement to others that will listen to them thank you father for this opportunity thank you for your word and thank you for everything you've taught us glory to your name in jesus name amen amen god bless you and thank you for stopping we'll catch up again soon